Hello, I'm Noah Finns, and this is Inside Yale Athletics, sponsored by Under Armour. We're going to start with a story on basketball player Mie Oni, a freshman who not only nearly didn't end up at Yale, nearly didn't end up at the Division I level. Doesn't look like a freshman, does he? Let alone a freshman who wasn't even recruited out of high school. Like, maybe midway through my high school career, I didn't think I was going to be able to play at any level in college. It's amazing because, you know, he didn't receive any scholarship offers out of high school. I didn't play any varsity minutes until my the end of my junior year. So I was dealing with injuries and some struggles playing, so I didn't really have much faith in my game then, but it picked up later. He nearly ended up playing Division III basketball at Williams, where he was all set to go until some issues came up with the finances. Turned out to be the best thing that could have happened to him and to Yale. All right, imagine him at Williams right now, what he could be doing at that level. A more typical James Jones basketball game, Oni! Hard to imagine, considering how well he's playing for the Bulldogs at the Division I level. Oni ended up growing eight inches from his freshman year and doing a year of prep school, where he really started to blossom and I watched him on film, and I've never offered a kid after watching film, but he was so impressive in terms of what he was doing. He led us to give him an offer. He came out to visit on his own dime with his father. In the meantime, other Division I programs were starting to catch on to what he was doing. It was a wild period because it really happened over the last month or so of my senior year. So I was, that was like, it was, that was a wild May, so I was getting a lot of calls from different schools a lot of interest from big time schools. Schools like Princeton, Stanford, and Wisconsin came calling, but by then, Oni was sold on Yale, and it's turned out to be a great fit with him cracking the starting lineup right away. I was really fortunate to come in and play right away, something I didn't, I wasn't able to do in high school, so I understand how it feels to be on the other side. He's a regular winner of the Ivy League Rookie of the Week Award and has been one of the top players in the league all season long. It's hard because we, we still have the team factor in it, so I don't look at it, what, what he's doing individually as much. But if you break it down and see what he's done as a freshman, it's really incredible. When I step on the court, it's, it's a little, I'm a little, turn into a little bit of a different person. I get really energetic and pretty confident about my game, so, and I let other people team know it and yeah I just I like to play with a lot of heart quite the turnaround from the kid who didn't think he had the game to play college ball now he says his goal is to play at the game's highest level and there's nobody not even himself doubting it. when it starts to get really cold outside it doesn't bother the rowing team because inside of Payne Whitney gym they have a facility that was built a long time ago but is still state-of-the-art Yale is the birthplace of collegiate rowing in the United States. We're blessed at Yale to have this space, no question. Few people know that Payne Whitney was actually a rower at Yale, and when he passed away, his widow wanted to build something in his honor, so she built the Payne Whitney Gymnasium. And of course, the only appropriate, the basement here, are three sets of rowing tanks. This building was built in 1931, circa World War II technology. These rowing tanks were state of the art then, but still remain amazing today. And uh, anytime someone's building a boathouse across the country, they come to measure our facility to see if they can replicate these tanks. And usually the end result is they cannot do it. Moving water, you can see the water in motion. And the whole concept of this is to simulate an eight moving up to speed. So we'll actually row with the flow of the water to simulate the boat getting lighter and lighter. Many programs have rowing tanks, but they're not propelled. For us, this water is actually propelled uh, by two ship propellers that are one story underneath us, pushing water up massive tubes to the top. If you look at the finish line buoys, that is a two-story holding tank of water, like a huge swimming pool. And then it's gravity fed at the top of the troughs coming down. So we can regulate the speed of the water. If we want it to go faster, we turn the dial up, obviously, and that pushes more water up, and boom, it comes down faster. One of the other great benefits of these tanks are 
the ability for us to coach one-on-one -on -one with an athlete. So any given day when we're on the river, I ride in a motorboat, they're out in a rowing shell, we can't come in contact, it's all verbal. Here we can get our hands on the athlete, adjust their position, make sure that they're uh, using the blade properly. Go ahead, sequence out nice, nice, long, good. And then if I don't like the way she's sitting centered in the boat, I can move her from side to side, center her up, make sure that she's strong in her position, and then go ahead. So any given day, you know, the rowing stroke is like anything else. It's a repetitive motion and we get stuck sometimes with bad habits. And so the hardest thing in all sport is breaking bad habits and this is a great place for us to work on breaking them down. And the function of the mirrors, when you're on a river again, there's no mirror around, there's nothing. We, we often videotape on the water and then can look at it quickly. But for immediate feedback in here, Lily can pause at body over and then she can look to the side and check her body position Make sure she has the angles correct. She has the mirror straight in front of her as well, making sure she's square, and then she can move forward with her stroke. In this facility, we can row on the machines. We can put them on uh, sliders so we can have them movable. We can row in the tanks. We can row the, ride the spin bikes. We can run on the indoor track. We can swim in the pool, and we can lift our weights. So many different ways to train throughout the winter to keep her from getting bored. You know, rowers are often known as the hardest training athletes on most college campuses. As far as training goes, there's no better setup in the country than what we have. And, uh, and, and this, the rowing tank in particular, allows us to, to do things technically that we would not be able to do without it. And it really enables us to you know, get to the next level as a team. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Inside Yale Athletics, sponsored by Under Armour. Till next time, we'll see you on campus.